Last time on Frieza on Earth, just over a year ago in real world time, we were introduced to a world that would be utterly impossible to create in our canonical story. More or less, Goku and Frieza have switched places in a one-to-one -one trade. Roshi would not only mentor him, but somehow still cross paths with Yamcha as well. Of course, Krillin would have ended up on his island anyway one way or another. However, despite him doing his best to teach Frieza, wickedness still resides in his heart. He fears that one day, he will grow bored of this world and destroy it. Who will be here to stop him? Meanwhile, after doing away with Dodoria unable to contain his lust for battle, Zarbon and Kakara believe that the latter just vaporized Raditz, Nappa, and Vegeta. In reality, the trio turned off their scouters and made their way to a planet with only low-level life forms. Naraka Blade Points is a melee combat battle royale game that focuses on fast-paced melee combat, insane mobility powered by the grappling hook, and a vast arsenal of melee weapons. Naraka has pioneered a unique combination of melee weapons and hero skills in the battle royale genre, offering limitless combat possibilities. Unlike some random easy shootout, it is necessary to predict your enemy's next moves and use the corresponding actions to counter them. The key to winning is I predicted your prediction. Forget the obstacles or barriers you've encountered when exploring the map in traditional shooter games. You can cover every single corner of the map in Naraka with the help of the grappling hook. It can even be used as a prop to knock enemies down. Each hero has its own unique skills, from crowd control, to fire abilities, healing, transformation, or simply having a huge, huge sword. And plenty of others, 13 in total. Customize your character's face down to the very last detail. In Naraka, you can become whoever you want. My face, your face, or even Richard Nixon's face. From October 17th to November 1st, 2022, Naraka Blade Point will be 50% off and free on Xbox Game Pass. So download it and get to chopping up bad guys today. This is part two of an ongoing series and was created by Koboon. Support him and catch up full ease in the links below. At the bottom of a lake. Nearby, a slightly more roughened version of Mai than we're used to sits idly by. Almost a mix of her original design and the variant we see in Super. Pilaf wonders what's taking so long. Where is Shu with that darn thing already? His underling reminds him to not let impatience take over. They are just one step away from glory. And this time, they will not waste their chance. The Emperor smiles at this. It's not that Mai is wrong, but he's just too excited. They've never gotten this far before. A Shu comes blasting out of the water, shouting that he's got it. He's retrieved the two star ball congratulating him on a job well done. He commands them to all get back to the ship as there's no time to waste. But before that, he has to pee. Having six of the seven Dragon Balls right before their eyes. Fortune is on the side of the Pilaf gang. When Shu runs into a problem, it appears they made a mistake when writing the coordinates of the last Dragon Ball because the radar is indicating a different location. Snatching the paper out of his hand, his leader demands to know what he just said. Let him see that. Glancing over the page himself, it does seem to have moved a few kilometers away. Though he's sure it's just some villager must have encountered it by now. Either way, stealing it will be a piece of cake. And then, the whole world will bow before their new lord. himself to exhaustion. Frieza tosses him a senzu. He tells him to eat it as it'll help him get his strength back. Frieza himself can get as many as he wants. But furious at the show of pity, the Namekian returns to his feet and growls that he doesn't want it, prompting the demon, or other demon, to cackle out what's wrong with him. He doesn't seem very happy to see him. 
How many years has it been anyway? Three? Four? Piccolo has actually become very strong. However, he's still as pathetic as always, no matter how far he's come. <laughs> he bellows out he's in no need for Frieza's stupidity. He needs to get out of here before he kills him. But Piccolo kill him? That's ridiculous. Besides, he didn't come here with any intention of fighting. Believe it or not, he comes in peace. After all, unlike the fearsome Piccolo, he himself is a benevolent being. I in the air. Popo questions Kami what those two may be talking about. He doesn't say, but knows something isn't right. They are aware that they're being observed. Postulating, the genie believes that must mean, but the guardian cuts him off to confirm his fears. They are, in fact, speaking through telepathy. What could they possibly be planning and why would they try to hide it? Just the thought of it gives the God of Earth chills. Could this mean that Frieza is conspiring with the evil Piccolo to act on his urges in destroying the planet? Or does he have something else in mind? Trying to remain optimistic, Popo thinks maybe he's just being paranoid. Perhaps they're planning nothing sinister at all. And this is all part of Frieza's mind games with Kami's evil half. Though as the God of Earth, it is his duty to protect it. For someone with an obligation as important as this, there's no such thing as paranoia. He can trust him on this. If something bad is meant to happen, then there is no doubt it will happen. As three objects pass closely by the lookout. But what could they have possibly been? So much power is contained within those three vessels. A little confused. Maya understandably mistakes this for a meteor shower. She jokes that perhaps they should just make their wish now. Like she'd be silly enough to believe in superstitions. But now that she does think about it, meeting a handsome gentleman this very night wouldn't be so bad. Although being as shy as she is at this point in the story, what could she be thinking? She pleads to the universe that she takes it back. Please don't fulfill that wish. Back with our warriors. Piccolo wonders what just happened. Three strong energies have just appeared out of nowhere. Tilting his head backwards, Frieza chuckles that he won't be left wondering what they're in for, though he figures the two of them will be seeing each other again very soon. Taking off towards the energies, the Namekian is left a bit dumbfounded. Given this new turn of events, he decides that it might be best to utilize that bean after all. Chomping down on it, he snarls that Frieza fellow is even more despicable than he remembered. Not far away, three space pods land near a small cabin. The owners of which come running out, panicked on what those impacts could have been. Like my, they too at first believed them to be meteorites. But no. Nappa, Raditz, and Vegeta make their way out of the ships, having successfully gotten themselves away from Emperor Kakarot. Likely making a bad decision, one of the locals decides that these three look human enough. Maybe they need help, completely ignorant to the wickedness he's walking towards. Raditz knows that this must be planet Earth. He read about it in a report not too long ago. Nappa doesn't seem to care wherever they are. First things first, they need to search for some food. Also, they should probably refrain from using their scouters to avoid detection from Kakarot's men. Though Vegeta argues there's no need to hide their presence anymore. They've escaped the reaches of the Empire. They're free now. At Kame House. As Roshi sleeps the night away, the television broadcast returns to its regular programming after their ad break. The host reminds all the late night viewers to have a wonderful evening and know that as soon as the clouds clear, they'll be able to admire a gorgeous full moon tonight. A full moon that quickly makes its appearance. Uh, hello? The man calls out to him. While sizing him up, he cautiously asks if they're from the big city. Is this some kind of government experiment or something? If they need any help, there's a telephone back in the cabin, some food as well. But these Saiyans, being the way they are. Raditz scoffs that this is just a punk with a power of only five units. He'll take care of them. As his wife shouts for him to look out, it's too late for him to move.
cover. Frieza arrives right in time to intercept the blast. The man profusely thanks his savior. He, he just saved his life, didn't he? Who comments that seems so. As Piccolo, oddly polite, utters to the stranger that he dropped his turban. He needs to take it and get out of here right now. While he scurries away, the pair stare down the trio causing all this trouble. Sporting a cocky grin, Vegeta activates a scouter in interest. He wants to see what they have here. Clearly getting a reading he wasn't expecting. That face, he's seen it before. Several years ago, back at a base. Vegeta frantically whips his head around the launching bay as he desperately looks for a ship. He screams at himself to use his head. How is he going to escape from this planet? Guarding around the corner, it looks like there's one left. Bingo! He makes a mad dash towards the open pod. But inside, a very young Frieza. Well, may not exactly matching the canonical timeline and birth date lore, this is a story about Goku and Frieza changing places after all. Vegeta figures it seems like someone must have just left this baby all alone. The Saiyan himself may have some rotten luck, but the little mutants here is even worse. The planet's going to explode any minute now, and by no means will he be on it. He taunts for him not to take it personally, but he's going to be taking the ship. When? He's blown away and left heavily wounded. While we don't see how Vegeta inevitably escaped, it turns out his shock was from recognizing Frieza himself. He's pretty sure this guy and that baby are the same person. Either way, the scouter isn't registering anything on him. So could that mean his power is so high the device can't even recognize it? When Nappa abruptly shouts the same, his scouter isn't working. It won't read anybody's but that green guy's power. He's only about 800 units. Not much of a challenge, but he can't get anything on that little dwarf. Raditz and Vegeta both alert the same. The latter of which decides that in this case, they'll just have to find out the old-fashioned way. Before the battle can begin, Piccolo mentions that he has a bad feeling about this. They should move to a more deserted area. Riza agrees. He doesn't like the way these men are greeting them. Watch out, Frieza! Perhaps not sensing the vast difference in power going on? <laughs> the Frost Demon is able to send his aggressor skidding into a mountain with ease. He explains to Piccolo that this one is the strongest out of the three, and he'll handle him. Piccolo can take care of the others. Even against our better judgment, the Namekia knows what he has to do. himself up. The evader is furious having been humiliated like this. Screeching after him, he seems to actually take a brief advantage. Though, it's only a ruse to get them away from Piccolo and the others. Watching them disappear into the distance. Nappa points out that Vegeta is even angrier than usual. Raditz wonders aloud if they should help him. When the Namekian suggests they come with him somewhere else, he bets they can fly just like their partner. Catching up with a couple of others who can fly. Topo appears before them with his magic carpet. Sensing what's happening with the Saiyans, Krillin asks what's going on. The genie explains that they're analyzing the situation. Him and Kami. Planet Earth is being invaded by aliens. But aliens? They've never seen anything like that before. Popo continues. He believes it'd be best for everyone to go to the palace until everything's resolved. The three of them wouldn't stand any chance against these invaders. And three? Tossing himself into the scene, Mercenary Tien. While he was initially only passing the gang, he stops when he notices those idiots. And why is Kami's assistant tagging along? Skipping formalities, 
It appears Tien is still a bad guy in this story. He comments that it looks like he wasn't the only one who sensed those powerful key signatures. Bowing, he proclaims that it is an honor meeting Mr. Popo here. He didn't think this situation would be so severe as to receive divine assistance. Smirking at this, said divine character remarks that that is very kind of him to say. If he would, he should also get on the carpet. They're all heading to the palace. But is he serious? Even despite his previous actions and deeds, he is still worthy to set foot in Kami's palace? Causing Yamcha to snore that he was just thinking the same thing. And Krillin to hang his head at his friend's comments. Yet another foolish decision by the former bandit. Tian grows a sinister glare and chuckles. You see that now. Even the weakest of the turtle school has the goal to oppose Kami's will. The weak? He better watch his words. But he isn't going to listen to a weakling. And if he's looking for a fight, Yamcha will give him a fight. Who can try if he wants? Tian will step on him like an ant. And so on. These two can't even look at each other without bursting into a shouting match. Taking a deep breath, Yamcha thinks he has just the thing to end this. He bellows that Tien doesn't have any friends. That's why Chaozu left him. Because he's wasting his life following the lessons of a miserable person who sold his morals and principles for a simple bag of money. Shocking more than just the crane student. The aforementioned can't quite process what he just heard. How? How dare he speak to him like that? Firing at him the Dodon Pa! Though at first looking like he was toast. Looks like everyone, including Popo and Krillin, left without him. But at least that stupid Ten Shinhan will think twice before making fun of him again. The weakest of the turtle school? No way! He's not letting anyone speak to him like that anymore. As of today, the great Yamcha will show the world he is no weakling. However, one has to ask if Popo chose to teleport Tien over Yamcha because he was simply closer, or was there another reason? Back with Frieza. Smoke takes over the battlefield as it looks like Vegeta's having the fight of his life. On the other hand, Frieza seems more relaxed than ready for a battle, though he compliments the invader, stating, not bad, what else do you have? Not hesitating, the Saiyan shouts for him to take this! But wiping his face, Frieza chastises, no, not like that! He needs to learn how to control his key. But first of all, he needs to never pick a fight with a stranger. That's just common sense now. As his foe falls to the ground, our hero worries that he did hit him really hard. He's probably hurt. Though Vegeta sneers for him to keep his advice to himself, he doesn't need it. Launching a massive attack that is felt nearly worldwide. Right at Sans Piccolo and questions if he felt that. It looks like his friend ticked Vegeta off a little too much. And suddenly, the green man doesn't appear so confident anymore. Look at that worried face of his. You know, that's the most fun thing about killing. Seeing the fear in one's eyes. Although Piccolo remains silent. Nappa growls out. Oh, I'm starving! Why the hell are we following this guy instead of looking for food? I could eat him alive right now! We're here! Descending upon some kind of natural structure, Redis can't help but comment, Yep, sure is empty here. Though the Namekian replies that it's actually a little too cozy for his own liking. But he does have his own private stream here. As he makes his way over to something, Nappa thinks he gets it. This place is like his home or something. Why'd he bring him here? He reveals he has something special for the both of them. Unveiling a jar in the dirt. But could it be for a particular technique? One that could give a weaker fighter an advantage against a foe even much, much stronger than himself. Either way, he goes on. To answer Nappa's other question, he wouldn't exactly call this home. Living here sometimes felt more like a prison. They will soon understand what he's talking about. 
and still toying with his adversary. Frieza has to admit that he may have underestimated the invader a little, and that could be very bad for the planet. So... Before he's rocked by a sudden attack, Vegeta snarls for him not to let his guard down. In this story, could Vegeta actually stand a chance against Frieza? Does the Frost Demon have any idea he can take other, more powerful forms? And what about Piccolo? Will he trap Nappa and Raditz using the Mafuba? Or is he only starting a battle that he is doomed to lose?